Learning music theory is extremely exciting, but it has a dark side as well. In fact, learning music theory can open up all sorts of new worlds when it comes to your guitar journey, but if you fall victim to one of these mistakes that I'm about to share with you, things kind of go to a, well, not so good place. So today I wanna to discuss the four most common mistakes when it comes to learning music theory. And I want you to know about these mistakes because once you are aware of them, you can then avoid them or course correct if you find yourself making one of them. And I thought this was a great lead up to the Fretboard Wizard Challenge that starts on March 1st. In fact, I'm gonna share some details about that Fretboard Wizard Challenge with you here in a little bit. But first, let's dig into these mistakes. Mistake number one, you feel like you're not ready. You might say things like, I'm brand new to guitar and I just can't learn theory right now. Or I'm not good enough at guitar so I shouldn't even try learning theory because well, I just need to get better at guitar first. That is completely false. The fact is when you start to learn theory, it's gonna actually accelerate your progress, whether you're new to guitar or you don't feel like you're as good as you should be. In fact, learning theory can make your progress on guitar that much faster because you're making really important connections. You'll understand why certain chords are grouped together. You're gonna understand what notes are in certain chords. You're gonna figure out what the hell a key is. You're gonna start to understand what a scale is and why it is so important. And having that foundational knowledge can do nothing but amazing things for your guitar journey. So the time to learn theory is now, don't delay. The next mistake that I see folks make is overall comprehension. Feeling like, oh, I need, if I'm gonna learn music theory, I need a comprehensive understanding of all things music theory. And this path of thinking is actually pretty easy to fall into because if you look at some online courses, like let's take for example, the Berkeley Online School of Music, uh, they have a nine month music theory course that costs about $4,500, it's actually $4,491. I digress. When you, when you look at that, you think, holy smokes, music theory is this vast expanse of, of stuff. And it is, but here's the deal. You don't have to learn all things music theory. What I want you to do is just target the most important things that will apply to your guitar journey. So instead of learning 100% of all things music theory, I want you to learn the 20 or 10% that is absolutely essential that you'll actually use on a day in, day out basis on your guitar. So you don't need to know everything. In fact, you don't even need to understand standard notation to learn music theory, which is a pretty common myth as well. The next mistake I see folks make, and I'm guilty of this as are many guitar geeks, is feeling like you just don't have the time. I don't have time to learn music theory. I only have a certain amount of time to play during the day, and I don't wanna use that time by you know, learning from a book and reading all this academic stuff and not being able to apply that to guitar, so I'll just play the things that I know because that feels good, right? Well, the answer to this is that, you know what, you know what ironically happens? When you start learning music theory, you start learning things faster. You start making connections faster. So in that short window of time you do have, when you back that up with some music theory knowledge, you're gonna make the best use out of that short time that you have. Even if it's just a 10 minute practice session, you might have an extremely large light bulb moment during that practice session, and it's all because of taking the time to learn music theory. And I think you'll find out when you focus on the essentials, it actually doesn't take that long to learn music theory or the applicable parts of music theory, I should say. And the final mistake that I want you to be aware of, and this is one that I think as guitarists, as people that create, as people that try and put songs and sounds out there for others to hear, we have a little bit of self-doubt. We just do, guitar geeks do. We're very, you know, they always say that the, the hardest critic is yourself. And when it comes to learning music theory, this critic kicks in big time, right? We feel like we don't have what it takes to learn music theory. Or, gosh, you know, I tried learning music theory some time ago and it just completely befuddled me. So I, I just, I'll, I'll just never be able to get this. I can't get this music theory stuff. The fact is, Everyone can learn music theory, period. Whether you're brand new to guitar, whether you're coming back after a long time away, whether you've kept a regular practice habit all along, anybody can learn music theory as long as you make it fun, make it applicable, meaning you apply what you learn to the guitar because then it really sinks in. And it's something that I want you to use on a day in, day out basis. When you learn these essentials, you're gonna, again, I said this before, you're gonna start making all of these connections that 
you never even knew existed, but it's gonna make the fretboard literally shrink before your eyes. You're gonna start to understand and see all these patterns and connections and know the reasoning behind them. And everybody has that capability. You just have to take it one step at a time. It's not like you flick a switch and all of a sudden, you've amassed all the music theory knowledge. It takes some time and it takes repetitive application and soon enough, you'll be able to do things that you never thought were possible. Now again, the reason I bring up these mistakes is because, well, I want you to be aware of them because some of you might find yourself shaking your head being like, I do use the time excuse, like I don't have time, or I do kind of have some self-doubt. And that's okay, this isn't a moment to beat yourself up. This is a moment to just recognize that and say, okay, well, that's one of those mistakes Tony told me about. I'm gonna go ahead and veer in the other direction. And when I say the other direction, I do want to announce that there's a Fretboard Wizard Challenge coming up on March 1st. Now, if you're brand new to this whole thing and you're wondering what the hell Fretboard Wizard is, it's a course that I developed that, focus on, that focuses on the bare essentials of music theory. The actual applicable uh, to your guitar pieces of music theory that you will get the most benefit out of. I've taken people that literally know nothing about music theory and given, given them this foundation to where they can figure out their own songs without having to look up tabs. They literally hear it, figure out the key, figure out the chord progression and can play a solo to it. They, uh, the folks that have gone through the Fretboard Wizard course are able to create their own music and actually know that it makes sense Folks that have taken the Fretboard Wizard course have been able to actually jam with their buddies with confidence that even if they don't know the song inside and out, they can actually take a pretty good stab and a really good educated guess at a solo, at the chords. It really opens up an entire new world of guitar playing. That's why I wanted to announce the Fretboard Wizard course. That's why I wanted to share those mistakes with you. To learn more about the Fretboard Wizard course, please visit fretwiz.com, F-R-E-T-W-I-Z.com. There's actually a short workshop that I walk you through that kind of digs a little bit deeper into these mistakes, but also, shows what's possible when you start to amass, and when I say amass, there's really only five pieces of music theory that you need to know. Everything else grows from these five pieces, and Fretboard Wizard is all about establishing a solid foundation for you so that you can become creative and you can live out your guitar dream scene. So again, please visit fretwiz.com and do so by March 1st because that's when the Fretboard Wizard Challenge starts. What is the Fretboard Wizard Challenge? Well, as a Guitar Geek community, we all go through the Fretboard Wizard course and at the end, we submit a video declaration that says, you know what, I'm a Fretboard Wizard. I can't believe I can do X, Y, and Z. I can't believe I can play a song by ear now. I can't believe I can create my own songs. I can't believe I can transpose a song all by myself without having to look anything up. That's what Fretboard Wizard does for you. That's the declaration that we do at the end and and a real guitar geeky thing. Once you submit that declaration at the end of the Fretboard Wizard Challenge, you actually get entered in to win a Waterloo WLS that's one of the prizes, a Taylor GS Mini, one of two Tony's Acoustic Challenge lifetime memberships, among some other prizes that I've been adding along the way. So again, please visit fretwiz.com to check out what the Fretboard Wizard course is all about, and of course, get the details on the challenge as well. All right, one more thing I wanna ask of you. In the comments below, can you please let me know what your biggest hurdle is when it comes to music theory? What's one thing that just you just can't understand? I'm just curious as to what you guitar geeks are running into out there and what's really hanging you up. So in the comments below, let me know what your biggest hurdle is. Let me know that one thing that drives you nuts that just feels like, gosh, I can't seem to understand this. And maybe on a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday, we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive. All right, coming up this week on Acoustic Tuesday, well, you've already learned the four most common music theory mistakes. You've already got the scoop on the fretboard wizard challenge. We're also going to look at a bluegrass guitar that is a complete cannon, a complete powerhouse, a complete mutant strength guitar. I'm talking a serious bluegrass instrument. We're also going to hear from a previously featured Acoustic Tuesday artist whose YouTube post of one of his songs has over 17 million views. Uh, yes, 17 million. That's a hell of a lot of zeros. And he took some time out of his schedule to answer our questions. So that's all coming up right after this. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite.
Welcome to Acoustic Tuesday, episode 131. This is the show where you're gonna learn about acoustic guitar gear, discover acoustic artists, and get inspired to live your very best acoustic life. As with all episodes of Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna share with you my guitar geek list for the week, but prior to doing so, we've got a little bit of a Guitar Geek trivia question for you. In fact, this question involves, well, it involves a luthier whom I admire, and it involves what that luthier did as a day job. Here's your question. Founding luthier of Ryan Guitars, Kevin Ryan, prototyped his first guitar design in 1987. During this time, what was his day job? Was it A, a lab chemist developing new polymers for use in aircrafts, aircraft, I guess there's no plural to aircraft. Uh, was it B, an aeroscience lab worker building a jet fighter model for transonic wind tunnel testing? Was it C, a civil engineer designing bridges for pedestrian walkways? Or was it D, an acoustician developing speaker baffles to organically amplify sound? Go ahead and ponder that question, and at the end, I'll not only give you the answer, but I'm gonna share some interesting acoustic developments, but that'll come a little bit later. First, let me get into this bluegrass guitar that I had the absolute honor of trying out. It is from the folks at Boucher. Now, I've had a chance to spend some time with a couple different Boucher models. Uh, first, the Studio Goose, it was an OM hybrid that I really enjoyed. Uh, the second was a 12 fret Heritage Goose that totally blew my mind. I love that guitar. And as soon as I played that guitar, I thought to myself, I gotta try out their Dreadnought. And I am so thankful to the folks, not only at Boucher, but also Sound Pure out in North Carolina because as the guitar was making its way from Boucher, to the States, over to Sound Pure. It made a pit stop here in Bozeman, and I had a chance to spend some time with it here in the studio. We documented that, and well, here it is. I first found out about Boucher guitars uh, some time ago. I was on YouTube searching videos and this fella, JP Comier, came across my screen and he was an amazing picker and he was playing none other than a Boucher guitar. So I did my digging and holy smokes was I impressed. So first off, thanks JP for turning me on to a great Canadian guitar maker. Yes, Boucher guitars are from the Great White North. I've had a chance to play three different models and this one was the long awaited one, the bluegrass dreadnought, the, the thing that I just wanted to play the most because they dialed in the look and they certainly dialed in the sound. <laughs> Uh, let me go over the standard specs first and then I'll go through the upgrades because this is a seriously hot rotted instrument. On the top we have master grade red spruce top. The back and sides are Indian rosewood. Now around the entire top we've got this beautiful koa binding which is an upgrade with the master grade pack and we have this herringbone purfling which is very traditional and just a, a great aesthetic overall. I may as well dig into the special features right now because as I mentioned before, it has a master grade red spruce top that is not only a brilliant sounding piece of wood, it's also torrified because this guitar comes equipped with the gold touch package, meaning that the top is slowly baked to simulate kind of an aging process to give you some of that old wood tone right out of the box. And along with that, we've got these beautiful gold open gear tuners right on the headstock, traditional style headstock squared off with an ebony facing, Boucher inlaid on the top, an inch and 11 sixteenths bone nut, very comfortable to play, very, very uh, bluegrass dreadnought style there. Uh, we've got a standard 25 and a half inch scale length, which really adds a bunch of snap to the notes and really gives you good tension under your pick as you're playing. It seems like the notes just pop off the fretboard. The neck is a really nice shallow profile. It is very comfortable to play. And I will also add this, the body, while it is gloss finished, 
the neck is satin finished, which actually adds a really nice touch of comfort and overall just feels great on your fretting hand. You've got small dot inlays on the ebony fretboard. As I mentioned before, the top is red spruce, master grade, torrified. Holy smokes, under the hood, we've got forward shifted X bracing, which makes this thing absolutely boom. other aesthetic details we've got, a beautiful abalone rosette, which of course is in conjunction with the master grade pack, as is that Koa binding I mentioned before. And overall, just a stellar guitar. We've got a bone saddle matching the bone nut, an ebony bridge, and just a glorious bluegrass instrument. If you're looking for an instrument that will compete at jams, has this beautiful depth of tone, this great projection, and overall stunning volume, this is a great guitar to consider. And uh, hats off to everybody involved in making this instrument. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue playing this guitar, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed hearing this Boucher BG52 GM. As you heard, I mean, what a stellar instrument. And again, uh, mega thanks, not only to the folks at Boucher, not only to the folks at SoundPure, but also to Colorado Kyle, who is behind the uh, camera operating. And uh, he really kind of dressed that guitar up quite well. I was pretty happy. He's like, I wanna try a couple new shots. Uh, can you help me with the lights? So, I mean, I also should thank myself for the lighting, but honestly, uh, Kyle made that guitar look really, really awesome. So cheers to Kyle. Thank you, Colorado Kyle. I'm sorry about the Avalanche losing in the stadium series. Boy, that's embarrassing, isn't it, Kyle? Um, <laughs> Kyle's nodding his head behind the camera right now, and he's. It, we had a discussion about you know the LA Kings not having the greatest season, Colorado having an awesome season, and then they have this pinnacle game on a weekend, the whole entire country's watching, and they just flailed around outside. Some really ugly jerseys, by the way. Uh, but anyways, that's a whole different hockey discussion. Uh, let's dig right into some comments back from episode 129. In fact, I should I should mention, if you wanna learn more about that Boucher Bluegrass Goose 52, uh, please visit acousticlife.tv forward slash AT131. You can watch that review in its entirety, get the specs, get the details, and of course, uh, check out that guitar as uh, as much more of a deeper dive as you wanna do. All of that is at AcousticLife.tv. Again, let's check out some comments from episode 129. Our first one comes from Jay Howlett, and he has a little bit of advice. Actually, he received some advice about dings and scratches, and I just wanted to share this because I thought it was very well-versed. Uh, Jay Howlett says, dings and scratches reminds me of Frank Ford when he handed me my new guitar back in 1993. He said this, it will never look better or sound worse. And I just thought that was a great quote from somebody whom I uh, admire. Uh, Frank Ford is kind of a trailblazer when it comes to guitar repair. He works out at Griffin Strings. I believe they're in Palo Alto, California. And he's put out so many great resources online. I believe he works in conjunction with Stu Mac, but he also runs his site frets.com, uh, which shares some repair tips and things like that. And I just thought Jay's encounter with Frank was, was pretty perfect. So thanks for sharing that, Jay. Uh, our next comment comes in the form of a, you know you're a guitar Guitar Geek When. This is from Enrico F. And he says, you know you're a Guitar Geek When. You just finished cleaning the storage room under the roof and you check how many additional guitar cases you can now fit in there after getting rid of four bags of old garbage. Well, it sounds like you just opened yourself up to four more guitars, Enrico. Uh, kudos to you for sharing that tip with the rest of us. Anybody with a crawl space, anybody with an unused room, get, get, rid, of that, some of this, get rid of some of the stuff you don't use. Add some guitars in there. It seems simple, but Enrico just outlined the process for us. Clean it out. Your spouse is probably super excited. You cleaned out the room and then fill it with guitar cases. They're neat, they're orderly, they're black, they're black they blend in. Uh, thanks, Enrico, we appreciate the tip. Our next comment comes in the form of a twofer. And uh, this is great because I asked you all for some tips to uh, figure out this whole guitar arsenal thing. You all have asked for my guitar arsenal and I wanna share it with you, but there's part, there's, there's this thing that's holding me back. And it's, it's Whitney. Um, <laughs> so Daddy0307 says this, I can so identify with your guitar arsenal dilemma with Whitney. 
When you put my guitar arsenal on display, and then I proceed to show it to my wife afterward, she had no clue I owned so many guitars. It's amazing what you can't discern when looking into a closet stuffed with all black cases. Uh, indeed, and I like the mystery element, especially when Whitney asks how many guitars I, I own, and I'm like, I, I don't know, there's some at the studio, there's a few here, you know, I don't know, maybe 10 or so, which she doesn't buy anymore because I think we're well into the 30s. Uh, I digress, but Tim Stark then answered uh, uh, Daddy 307 with this. Yes, even shocked myself when I lined it all up. And this is my second time building a guitar arsenal. I cry realizing my last one wound up in a pawn shop. Gives me subconscious trust issues and made me kind of a hoarder. <laughs> um, that is uh, not only sad, but I'm also super excited that you are building a second guitar arsenal. I think so many times, um, you know, we go through these phases in life where it's like, ah, oh, I gotta get rid of these guitars. I know my dad did it when I was born. He had a lot of great instruments, sold them all when I was born, so I feel kind of bad. I didn't start off on the right guitar geek foot, but later I ended up getting him back into guitar, and then he amassed another guitar snow. So there's hope. We can always do it, you know, this, this second version of a guitar snow. It's, it's good, it's good. I appreciate you hopping right back in. And our last comment comes from Keith Bates. He says, once again from KC, South Carolina, guitar geekdom nirvana. Thank you for the lesson on the scale shapes. Good way to think about it. The NAM preview was great. The pre-war guitars are a revelation. Again, thank you for a great and informative show. Well, you are very welcome, Keith. Thank you for watching and thank you for commenting. Really thanks to everyone for commenting. Uh, it's so great to go through the episode and read the comments and just hear from you all out there, all of you guitar geeks. It's so touching and so great that uh, you all share your time with me and the Acoustic Tuesday show. Uh, it's pretty darn awesome. In fact, there was one comment I wanted to mention. I didn't pull it, but I just had read it. Uh, Andrew shared a very interesting story in response to me featuring the tree mahogany. He said uh, he created this little bit of a tall tale about the wood used in his guitar. He said that the wood guitar, the wood that was used in his guitar came from the log, uh, which he went on to, to share a very a harrowing story of the log and its origins. It's pretty interesting. Check out episode 129 if you want to read that story. And then also I want to mention there's lots of love for the pre-war guitar company. Uh, so very cool to read that. Some of you, the pre pre-war guitar company was brand new to. Other folks had heard about it before and just thought, yeah, those are awesome. So uh, very cool to, to share the love with the folks at pre-war guitar company. Not to mention Molly Tuttle plays uh, pre-war guitar. <clears throat> Pretty cool, right? Yeah, that was, that was Molly Tuttle mentioned. You're welcome, everybody. You're welcome. All right, moving right on. Uh, do know that you can support the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's very simple. Just visit AcousticTuesday.store and uh, pick out your favorite piece of merchandise. It could be a hooded sweatshirt, it could be a t-shirt, could be a pair of socks, a phone case, whatever you deem appropriate for your guitar geek life. Please go ahead and purchase. The next thing I want you to do is to don that t-shirt, wear those socks, put that phone case on, and take a picture of yourself wearing that Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. And then lastly, submit it at AcousticLife.tv where you can go ahead and upload your picture, tell your story, and of course, uh, I will feature you on an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. In fact, Cliff did that very thing. Cliff is from Clearfield, Utah, and he says this. He uploaded a picture of himself with his Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirt on, and he says, a short while back, I recall that you encouraged us to send you pics of us rocking our Acoustic Life gear. So, if it doesn't blind you, I've attached a pic. Well, Cliff, it does not blind me. In fact, I'm delighted that you are wearing your Acoustic Tuesday for Vets shirt. He says, I look forward to reading Acoustic Life Journal every Monday. That's our Monday guitar player email to give you a little bit of inspiration for the week and each Acoustic Tuesday episode. I enjoyed the five day blues challenge and I incorporate the patterns into my practice sessions. Thank you for the great information, instruction, and fun that you infuse in the Acoustic Tuesday program. I was in the Marine Corps in the early 1980s and I have a real appreciation appreciation for your Guitars for Vets efforts. Thanks again for all you do. The guitar is a Peel JC800 EQN. Make sure, make sure, um, <clears throat> sorry, I had taken some notes. Uh, let's leave off with that guitar. The guitar is a Peel JC800 EQN. Uh, so huge thanks to Cliff for uh, sharing that picture with us. And I wanna again, encourage all of you guitar geeks, if you haven't done so yet, uh, get your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, take a picture and submit it at AcousticLife.tv. And uh, Cliff just reminded me of that Monday email. And if you're not subscribed to the Acoustic Life Journal, uh, it's actually pretty easy to subscribe to it. All you have to do is go to Acoustic 
AcousticLifeJournal.com and uh, go ahead and enter your email address. It's AcousticLifeJournal.com, just like it sounds. And uh, just enter your email address. You'll get a, a an email every single Monday that uh, will not only keep you in the loop, but uh, share some additional Guitar Geek trivia with you. And we've been featuring a drool-worthy guitar every single week. And there's a lot of drool around, I gotta tell you. Uh, some really good stuff. You don't wanna miss it. Again, go to AcousticLifeJournal.com to sign up. And speaking of mail and things like that, I got a wonderful thing in the mail today. The, well, I got two things in the mail today. One was a physical mail item. The next was a digital mail item. We'll start off with the physical. It's actually a hint at something I'm gonna feature in an upcoming episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I got this beautiful mug. It's a Yeti coffee mug, and this is awesome because if we look at, this is great for casual conversation, but if I wanna get into a full-on debate about guitars, Look at how much more coffee I can come fueled with, with this Yeti. And on this Yeti mug, it says McPherson Guitars. So I wanna thank the folks at McPherson for not only sending me this mug, but another special treat that I have to reveal on an upcoming episode. I can't tell you what it is. I can't tell you what model it is, hint, 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 but it looks stellar. And I also got this wonderful little thanks, thank you card, which I thought was cool. It's like a scratch board thing with a little rainbow thing underneath, so thanks. Thanks to the folks at McPherson, particularly Johnny Q. And then lastly, uh, I was actually looking for my more mail. Uh, let me show you this. I gotta show you this. This was not planned. Um, so I, I spoke about my guitar signal earlier and I love these Bovida humidif packs. So this is what it takes uh, about every two months to humidify my guitar signal. So that should give you an idea of the sheer quantity of instruments. Whitney, if you're watching this, I apologize in advance. I'm sure we'll talk tonight at dinner. Uh, and then the last piece of mail, the digital mail that I got, I received notification that the folks at Emerald Guitars in Ireland are offering to build someone a custom designed Emerald of their own choosing. Literally, you, you are able to design your own Emerald with Alistair Hay, the head of Emerald Guitars, fly out to Ireland to pick up the instrument hang out with the Emerald crew, and then take a tour of the shop and see how these amazing instruments are made. And I thought to myself, I need to let all of you guitar geeks know that you can be a part of this giveaway. It's a giveaway, an all expense paid trip to Ireland to design a guitar, pick it up when it's done, get dinner, hang with the crew, take the factory tour, I mean, can you even imagine what that's like? Well, if you can't, don't worry, I've got great news. There's a full video of kind of a shop tour and almost the, the Emerald Campus tour that Alistair did. And in that video, he actually shares with you how to enter this contest. In fact, I've pulled that portion of the video out for your viewing delight. So pay close attention. If you think about you know, winning a trip to Emerald Guitars, even, even if it takes 15 minutes to enter this contest, I think it's well worth your Guitar Geek time. Just take a lunch break at work, or better yet, take a full lunch break, come back, and just to ease into the afternoon of work, go ahead and enter this contest. It's really not that hard, but pay attention to what Alistair says in this video. All right. So, that was the tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit more uh, about our place see a little bit of what we do and uh, we're going to show you a whole lot more. This is just a little, I guess, a little overview of, uh, of where we are here. So over in the coming weeks we're going to engage with you and uh, put out different videos just telling more, uh, giving more insight into all the different elements. So I'd love to hear from you, I'd love to hear what it is you'd like us to do, what you'd like to see from us. Uh, and most importantly right now, um, if you want to be part of this competition, if you'd like to win a custom Emerald guitar, have that hand built for you, designed in conjunction with me, I'll personally take you through the design process, uh, and have you flown from anywhere in the world with your friend right here to Donegal. Um, what you need to do is you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you need to like us and follow us on our Facebook page. Uh, you need to go to our Instagram and follow us on our Instagram. Also, what I'd love you to do is go to the comments section. Uh, in the comments section, I'd like you to tag your friends that you might actually want to bring with you here. Um, and maybe a friend who may add to the competition and may want to bring you. And tell us 
what Emerald Guitar you would like to build. So I'd really like to hear what you would like us to build for you and why. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed taking the tour. And uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for us. I've never done a competition like this. And uh, thanks for bearing with me as I showed you around Emerald Guitars. We'll see you soon. So right now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to AcousticLife.tv, click on the link for that video, watch it in its entirety. It's about, I want to say it's like 12 to 15 minutes. And then in the description of that YouTube video, I think there's about five steps that you have to follow. But here's the deal. I forgot to mention the friend part. You can double your chances of winning. Find one guitar geek friend and be like, hey, friend, if I win, I'm gonna take you. Why don't you go ahead and enter also? And if you win, why don't you take me? I mean, you just doubled your chances of winning. And judging by the YouTube views on that video, I wanna say there's about 3,700 views. So you could actually double your chance. You could have a two in 3,700 chance. I don't know, I'm not a betting guy. I'm not an odds guy, but I'm sure that's better than winning the lottery. And to me, it seems like the Guitar Geek lottery. It seems like a trip of a lifetime. And Alistair's, Alistair's a really cool dude. Uh, we actually spoke on the phone for about an hour uh, last week. Uh, we were talking about some new things that they were up to. And he also gave me a little bit of a scoop. I don't know if I can share this actually. I'm gonna share it. Uh, let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be as vague as possible. Uh, he told me that one of my favorite non-acoustic bands just was there on tour. They were a very loud band. There's about nine members of them. Uh, and they actually chose some emerald guitars. They're specking out some custom em emeralds, which I thought was really cool. I can't wait to tell my son. He's gonna be pumped. Anyways, that's my little hint at some insider information. But anyways, that's it for the mailbag. Again, make sure to check out that Emerald Guitar giveaway. I wanna make a big deal of it because it's a really cool opportunity. Uh, Alistair's a huge mega guitar geek and judging by that video, it looks like the crew is just a, they, they look awesome to hang with. I could just see some, probably some Irish whiskey, probably some bourbon. I mean, you might have to smuggle that in, but it'd be a fun hang. The place you get to stay is incredible. He does a full tour of that. They've got a dartboard, a pool table, guitars. Just watch the video. You gotta see the table too. The table's incredible. Him and his dad built this table. That's all I'll say. I gotta move on because I'm getting, I'm getting yelled at right now visually. Uh, Colorado Kyle's trying to snap the whip. He's trying to keep me on track. But, you know, I feel like I don't have to listen to him because his team failed to win against one of the worst teams in the league. Isn't that right, Colorado Kyle? Uh, <laughs> he just was going to throw something at me. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, the next artist that I'm going to share with you is not somebody that is new to the Acoustic Tuesday show. In fact, we featured John Gom on episode 117. John is... An absolutely delightful fingerstyle, percussive fingerstyle finger artist. It's hard to say. Um, in fact, John is one of those players where you watch him play and it's completely mesmerizing on so many levels. But what always fascinates me is watching John play, he's able to do the percussive elements. He's able to play the bass with the guitar, the bass parts. He's able to play the melody. He's able to change the tuning on the fly. He's able to sing while doing all of this stuff. That's like five things. I think my brain would completely explode. You know that that emoji where the brain explodes? That's what I look like when I watch John Gom play. In fact, uh, for those of you who may have missed episode 117 or maybe you don't know who John Gom is, here's a quick sample of his song, Passion Flower, which currently to date has over 17 million views. And I think you'll see why, here it is.
Punisher, delightful and mesmerizing sums it up, but there's plenty more adjectives I could probably throw in there. Uh, but you just witnessed it yourself. Uh, he is awesome, just plain awesome, and certainly a guitar hero of mine, and maybe some of you as well. And you might be wondering, gosh, what does John listen to? What's his favorite guitar? What's his favorite piece of gear? What's the one piece of gear that changed John's guitar life? And instead of speculating, why don't we just pay John a visit and have him answer those questions for us? Here he is. Hi, this is John Gom. I've been asked to answer three acoustic life questions. Um, so my first question I have to answer is, who is an under the radar artist that people should be listening to? Okay, so I would say, um, one of my favourite ever artists is called Nick Harper and he's a an English singer-songwriter, he plays acoustic guitar and he's kind of a triple threat, so he's a virtuoso acoustic guitarist, he's uh, an incredible singer with just the most kind of powerful, beautiful voice and he writes unique, uh, intelligent, just he just writes beautiful songs. Um, my favourite album is probably Harper Space, which is about 20 years old now. And uh, he's the son of Roy Harper, who's a famous kind of 70s British folk legend who's was friends with Led Zeppelin and stuff. Um, OK. Out of all of your acoustic guitars, which one is your favourite? So um, this is Wilma. She's very, very old. I've been... Um, playing Wilma for um, since 1999, so she, I've had her for a really long time, and I bought her secondhand um, just from an ad in the back of a guitar magazine, and she cost £750, and um, she's <laughs> been with me to every inhabited continent on Earth now, and we've played many, many concerts together. I've written, I think, every song that I play kind of in recent times, in modern history, um, has been written on, on this guitar. She really needs to retire, to be honest. As you can see, she's, she's not a young lady anymore, but she still sounds good, you know. play like this. Okay, I'll put it down. Um, and what's the one piece of gear that has changed your acoustic life? Just <laughs> Wilma. <laughs> Wilma, but there's, there's others, you know. The pickups inside here are really important. Um, but uh, one that's changed my life recently is uh, the new amplifier from Blackstar, the British uh, amplifier maker, because I actually was lucky enough to be able to help them design this amplifier. So it's called the Sonnet um, amp, and it's like this completely new way of making amplifiers for acoustic guitars. Anyway, that's the advertisement for that over. Um, okay, so thanks very much for listening to my, my music. Thanks very much um, to uh, Tony for playing my music. And apparently I have to say, guitar geeks unite. I have to accept that Guitar Geek is probably my strongest identity, so <laughs> I can't deny it. Okay, cheers. A uh, huge thanks to John Gom for taking time out of his schedule, taking time out of, out of his practice sessions to share those answers with us. It's so cool to get that inside scoop into the artist's brain, what changed their life, what gear they use, and who we should listen to. It's kind of like a it's just a wonderful little mini Acoustic Tuesday show within the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's like an Acoustic Tuesday hall of mirrors uh, in, in, in a way, I guess you could call it that. Um, but yeah, again, huge thanks to John for taking the time out. And uh, for those of you who want to learn more about John, please visit AcousticLife.tv. Again, I featured him back on episode 117. Uh, you can check out a couple different performances. There's links to buy his albums there. In fact, I think you'll want to check out his albums. He did the artwork on his later albums. And he's just a... Overall, awesome creative. Somebody that you need to know for sure. An inspiration uh, for all of us guitar geeks. Now, uh, I want to mention the jersey that I'm wearing today. 
because uh, I feel like I was really ragging on Colorado Kyle earlier, and the jersey I'm wearing today is the most recent Hawks Winter Classic jersey, as we all know, or maybe you don't know, maybe you're not a hockey fan. The Winter Classic is an outside game, as is the Stadium Series, which the Avs just played and, and they lost in. I just wanted to mention that again. They lost to the Kings, who may not even make the playoffs this year, um, but the Avs certainly will. But just to make Colorado Kyle feel a little bit better, I have to share the stat that the Hawks have played, but I want to say six or seven outdoor games. They have yet to win an outdoor game. So, I don't know. That's just an interesting stat for all of you hockey fans out there. Colorado Kyle, hopefully that prevents you from throwing things at me. Um, but let's move right along, shall we? Uh, lots of goodness today. We have to wrap up the show with your Guitar Geek trivia question focused on Kevin Ryan. And again, this was about his day job. One of my one of my favorite luthiers, a luthier whom I think is, gosh, he's just the guy that continues to transform and, and elevate the acoustic guitar to not only an incredible tool, but an incredible aesthetic presence as well. So with that said, here is a review of your question. Founding luthier of Ryan Guitars, Kevin Ryan, prototyped his first guitar design in 1987. During this time, what was his day job? Was it A, a lab chemist developing new polymers for use in aircraft, B, an aeroscience lab worker building jet fighter models for transonic wind tunnel testing, C, a civil engineer designing bridges for pedestrian walkways, or D, an acoustician developing speaker baffles to organically amplify sound? If you answered B, an aeroscience lab worker building jet fighter models for transonic wind tunnel testing, you're correct. Though an aeroscience lab was perhaps an unlikely setting to foster an avant-garde acoustic guitar, Kevin's experience at Northrop steeped in material science and precision engineering equipped him with a singular perspective and set of tools to craft a new class of acoustic instrument. As he worked, melding art and engineering on his first series of guitars, each step seemed to inspire new approaches to guitar design and construction. With time, he debuted more instruments and more models. With industry-first design features like the Ryan Bevel and acoustic flutes, stunning, acoustic honeycomb, and laser-sculpted EO bracing, among many others. In fact, Kevin Ryan has made the guitar beautiful on the outside, and also internally, the guts of the guitar are just as gorgeous. And I, I, he, I offer up a huge tip of the hat uh, to him and his team for kind of elevating the inside of the guitar. It's, it's, you know, we all know it's kind of the motor that drives the guitar, but gosh, throwing a mirror in a Ryan guitar, looking at the, the underbelly of the Ryan guitars is just, it's glorious. It's gorgeous. The inside is just as beautiful as the outside. I don't know how else to say it, so that's what I'll leave it at. The inside is just as beautiful as the outside. So again, thanks Kevin Ryan for making beautiful, beautiful instruments and for testing jet fighter models, uh, because apparently that inspired you to make some of the most bad guitars in the world. All right, moving right along. Oh man, a little sneak peek into next week and I'm excited about this one because I only need four words to describe next week's show. American primitive finger style guitar. Finger style is one word, otherwise it would have been five. Probably would have been cooler, but four words, right? American primitive finger style guitar. In fact, next week's show, I'm gonna even cut it down to two, you know what? I'm gonna cut it down to two words. Next week's show, I'm gonna describe in two words. John Fahey, that's it. That's what's all, all of next week is gonna focus on John Fahey. And I don't care if you even like John Fahey. If you like him, tune in. If you don't like him, please tune in. If you know nothing about John Fahey, please tune in. If you know everything about John Fahey, well, you're gonna be right at home. Because next week on Acoustic Tuesday, I'm gonna dig into John Fahey's life. I'm gonna dig into his gear, his songs, his albums, his influence, and give you some resources so that you can become as big of a John Fahey fan as I am. Probably bigger, probably bigger, a bigger John Fahey fan. A fascinating guitarist, a mysterious guitarist that you need to know more about, so make sure to tune in next week. And don't forget, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I had to think about that for a second. At 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube, uh, you can catch each weekly episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, there's a lot of days there, please visit AcousticLife.tv where you can do a deep dive on everything I've ever featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, well, happy Tuesday and guitar geeks unite. Cheers. Bye.